Hello and uh, good afternoon everyone. So myself Sushant, uh, so I have been uh, part of Soda Foundation on and worked on several projects on Soda Foundation and maintainer of several projects at Soda Foundation. Okay, so today I am here to introduce uh, or uh, rather describe a project uh, on container data protection that is Kahu. So it is one of the latest projects that is uh, added to the Soda Foundation. So uh, before getting into the details of the project, so I just want to mention couple of points regarding the motivation behind this project. So when we talk about the data protection, so this is some word which we have been uh, uh, we have we would have come across on several applications in the traditional uh, way also like uh, 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 even the traditional applications need data protection. So uh, and uh, when when we tell like any application need a data protection, it holds good for uh, cloud native applications also. So this is uh, it's just the extension of a problem with respect to data protection to cloud native applications and. Uh, uh, when we talk about applications, there are two type of applications uh, in the containerized world. One is stateful application and one is stateless application. So stateless applications means application can run without being bothered about its history or its previous run, um, run states or run values. And in case of a stateful application, that means the application would have been running with some persistent information and it will it would have some arrangement to access and save those persistent information. So with respect to data protection, so most of the time it gives a notion that data protection is required only for the stateful application because they would have saved something so they might like to want, um, they might like to retrieve the saved information earlier. But actually that is not the case because in case of a stateless application, even application itself has some configuration to run with. Even if you want to, if this application goes down and if you are thinking of bringing this application back, so even that configuration is necessary for that application to bring back. So, it, so in either case, stateful or stateless, data protection becomes a key, uh, key aspect. And also when we are considering about data protection, the roles, I mean the roles or the access management, and the uh, different uh, scopes with respect to application also need to be considered. So these are some of the things which we, which we were uh, thinking when we were exploring about uh, uh, this problem statement and also this project. So uh, as I mentioned, this project is mainly for the containerized applications and, uh, and specifically for Kubernetes, which is one of the well-known well -known containerized orchestra, container orchestration platform. So we'll go and we'll see some touch upon like what is the data protection support we already have in Kubernetes and what are the things which are missing or kind of in progress or uh, which is upcoming in Kubernetes and uh, uh, current work that is being done and how, uh, how these things are getting handled in our project. So what is available in Kubernetes? So if you think of a Kubernetes application, what we call as a workload. So we have uh, APIs or interfaces to create different type of workloads based on our requirement, such as stateful application or deployment or daemon set. Uh, so all these kind of uh, APIs are available to create our application set and as well as we can create our custom resource definitions. And with respect to storage, mainly uh, uh, we call it as a persistent volume, so when we want to take a backup of a persistent volume, there's a concept of volume snapshotting. So these are some things which uh, Kubernetes already has it. And if you see uh, with respect to protection aspect, what Kubernetes already has, uh, what we call volume snapshotting. How it works is it is mainly based on the feature support of CSI, which is container storage uh, interface. So what user need to do is the user will be uh, creating a snapshot of its persistent volume so CSI has uh, uh, its own uh, sidecar which is CSI snapshotter. So any CSI driver uh, which implements snapshotting feature, so this uh, CSI sidecar will be running along with the driver, uh, driver uh, containers and the snapshot can be taken based on the user request. So once the snapshot uh, is, actually the snapshot is taken at the storage side. So, uh, and whenever we want to restore, so we give some uh, bookkeeping information regarding uh, 
the snapshot and we ask again CSI, CSI provisioner to get back the uh, or rather re restore this uh, volume or restore this uh, persistent volume in terms of uh, uh, application being able to use it again. So this is what we have already have in uh, uh, Kubernetes from quite long time. So what are the real challenges uh, with respect to containerized data uh, protection, backup and restore? So uh, when we talk about backup and restore, the user requirement may be like uh, uh, he may not want or rather application does not want to backup all the data or all data of uh, all its uh, sub, sub resources or sub modules or sub microservices. So rather there may be a use case wherein he want to protect only part of the data because he feels that need to be protected. So that means it boils down to the granular level and a granular level can be entire cluster level or namespace level or particular application level or even a specific resource level itself. So and backup, uh, when we talk about backup, two things come into picture. One is the metadata backup and the volume backup. So you might want both of them or either of them. And uh, filtering, as I mentioned, it can go to any level till a specific uh, granular resource. And also backup repository management, means where exactly you want to keep the backup so that you can make it accessible as you want. Uh, and restoration also, when we talk about restoration, restoration also uh, we need uh, uh, with some filters and uh, restoration targets. So some of the key blocks identified with respect to what is missing in Kubernetes in data protection is volume backups, uh, backup repositories, and uh, uh, quasing and unquasing hooks. That means when you want to run backup or restore, you might want to uh, do some operation prior to taking the backup and after taking a backup, and a similar case for restore as well, based on the uh, application. Because most of the time when we run an application, it will, be in dep uh, it will have some kind of a dependency with the other applications. So when you are doing such operations, maybe there will be impact on other applications. So you might want to take some precautionary action before going ahead with the backup or restore. And change block tracking so that uh, you track whatever is changed and uh, that will result in a very efficient backup. Volume group and volume con uh, group consistent snapshot means uh, if the storage has the capabilities to group the volume and take a snapshot together, uh, which will help which will uh, help in some performance so that kind of a support also can be expected from the application and the application level snapshot and backup means uh, detecting whether there is some change in any of the uh, aspect or resources related to application and acting upon that so soda cdm uh, let me just introduce the positioning of the soda cdm uh, as we know so, uh, soda foundation is a sub foundation under linux foundation so Soda Foundation has uh, several projects. So for the container data management, as it's a bigger scope, so we have put uh, uh, under the Soda Foundation, that's a separate organization that is called uh, Soda CDM, Container Data Management. And one of the projects, uh, so it is responsible for holding all the projects related to container data management, be it backup, restore, or some other features such as uh, disaster recovery, replication, all these things. Uh, will come under the purview of container data management. So uh, currently what we are working is we are working mainly on the backup and restore related use cases and going forward uh, there will be a observability and replication recovery use cases which might be part of the same project or might uh, uh, come as a part of a new project as well. So. Uh, under Soda Foundation, the first project is Kahu. This is purely for backup and restore uh, related use cases for containerized applications. This is with respect to positioning of Kahu. So uh, this is the high level architecture of uh, Kahu project. So what we have here is we have Kahu uh, with its, uh, the, you can see a layered architecture of Kahu. At the top, we have a application layer so uh, uh, API layers, all these APIs are in terms of uh, custom resource definitions. And beneath that we have a core services to perform these operations and also operation management services 
mainly to operate on some of the non-core services based on the user request. And the key uh, uh, feature of Kahoo is uh, storage provider framework. So we'll come to the details of that, like how this storage provider framework is implemented and how it gives flexibility for uh, other third party vendors to get hooked to the uh, hook to this uh, architecture. And beneath that we have uh, different kind of providers on the fly they can be hooked in and Kahoo also provides uh, some of the default providers which we will look up, uh, look into uh, which is normally like uh, most frequently used use cases so it can be directly used from one of the default providers from Kahoo and uh, all these things are sitting on top of uh, some storage backend. So what are the key goals for Kahoo? So uh, at high level, we can think like backup restore as a feature. So when we talk about backup restore, uh, inherently there are some aspects which we need to consider. So uh, we can see metadata backup and uh, uh, metadata backup and restore for KHS resources at a different level, and uh, snapshotting support for uh, backup, and also the restore applications and full and incremental and differential backup. That means these are different kind of backups based on uh, uh, use cases. Uh, this will really help in uh, uh, improving the efficiency. Be full means we will always take the complete backup which may not be required in all the cases. So uh, identifying the change or identifying the difference and only acting upon that for taking a backup would be a uh, uh, better approach as well. So customized pre and post hook support backup across the storage providers. That means if we have multiple storage providers from who are responsible for provisioning the volume and backing up uh, uh, an application which whose volume spans across uh, multiple storages. And cross cluster backup means you take up uh, your applications running in one cluster and you want to be, uh, you want to take a backup of this in another application, another cluster and be ready in case of any, uh, uh, anything happening to this application so that you can seamlessly bring it up at uh, uh, another cluster. And backing up of CSI provisioned and non-CSI provisioned volumes, like CSI provisioned is mainly coming from one of the CSI drivers and non-provisioned can be something like NFS or iSCSI provided volumes. Uh, so backing up of this as well. Uh, so these are some of the key things which comes under backup and restore goals and storage provider framework which I introduced in our previous thing. So what we try to do is uh, uh, these features, we, our idea is backup restore feature is it's like uh, independent of storages. So we want to make sure like we bring in an adapter layer for hooking the storage providers. So any point of time, any storage provider can just implement certain set of interfaces and get themselves hooked to our framework. So, and co coexistence of multiple backup providers means, so at any point of time, uh, you, uh, multiple storage providers can be running and helping you to take a backup of uh, volumes provided by multiple uh, CSI, multiple drivers. And from usability perspective, some kind of automation and orchestration means uh, uh, application uh, can be given for, uh, based on some policies so like you want to take a daily backup or weekly backup. So these kind of a policies can be defined so that automatically these requests can be posted on the system and uh, the application can un undergo a very consistent and a predictable way of uh, backing up. So these are the goals high level and some of the design decisions made during this is one is uh, pluggable storage provider framework and uh, control plane and data plane entities are uh, independent, kept independent and common module for CSI support uh, because uh, for all the CSI provided volumes, if they already support some of the CSI features, probably we don't need to do anything extra to integrate with Kahoo. So just with the support of default uh, CSI snapshotter, all those can be integrated. And backup and restores are kind of a jobs here. It is not a long running program. That means you trigger, you have a backup, backup finished, and you have certain set of history or the information which is saved as a part of backup object. So you can always refer and uh, see like what exactly has happened during the backup and what and all were considered during the backup. And one more is a restic support for a default backup. So restic provides uh, 
um, at the node level it can help us to take the backup of a volume. So we can integrate this so that even if we do not have any actual pro storage provider, still we can use RESTIC and uh, get the volume backing up term. And also uh, the O&M aspect. So where are we currently? So this has been, uh, the basic things has been already implemented like what is required for backup and restore and hooks and for the backup of CSI provisioned volumes and storage provider framework. So this has been already part of our Kahu project. And uh, we already, we, uh, we have integrated NFS as a default provider for backup. And so even if you do not have uh, any other provider, like mostly S3 may be used. So we can also hook in S3, but in spite of that, whether uh, Kahu itself provides NFS as a default uh, metadata backup provider. And some of the contribution opportunities, next plan and contribution opportunity. So in next phase, we want to support a cross cluster backup and restore. And uh, some work is also to be done with respect to extension of storage provider backup support. And uh, completely the O&M part is currently yet to be implemented. So we seek uh, support from the community and enthusiastic developers on Kubernetes who are working on Kubernetes fronts to help us in uh, and, and means, uh, go with us and learn together and contribute to this project. So we'll be more than happy to uh, onboard you and also guide you and seek and learn from you with respect to this. These are some of the links where we can get connected. So we, Twitter, uh, we most probably we use Slack because it is easy for our communication and uh, immediate uh, response. And the, uh, these are the project documentation and project details where we have good amount of documentation what about deploying our project and using our project. So that's all from my side. And uh, I have a demo to show. Uh, can, yes. Ah, here. Uh, yeah. So, uh, can you control this? So, uh, can you play from beginning? Yeah. Yeah, restart the demo. So in this one, we already have deployed Kahu. So we can see basic Kahu services running here. So we have a NFS provider which is already deployed and Kahu service which represents basic backup and restore service, uh, backup and restore controller. And we have an inbuilt NFS server which we are already running. And uh, we have deployed an application Nginx pod which uses a service account to demonstrate. So this is a pod which use Nginx SA service account. So our aim is to back up this application and bring it back. So we have a backup YAML. And in this one, we have mentioned Kahu test as the namespace to be backed up and the pod resources to be backed up. So when we tell pod, it also uh, backs up its dependent resources. So let's go ahead and uh, apply this YAML. So we can see one backup object is created and we can see the state has finished and completed. If any error we will notice here and we also notice through the event why the backup has failed. And in this NFS server we can just go and see. this NFS server can be external server where we can mount it. So this is a container based just for demo. So we can see like we have a tar file which has backed up Nginx and uh, pod and the service account resource. So if you have external NFS server, we can just mount that path and see where it is saved. And this is a restore YAML. So where we are given which backup we want to restore and namespace mapping like which backup resource, which namespace resources should go to which resource, uh, which namespace after restore. 
If you do not give, it will take the same namespace, it will try to create once again. So after that we just apply, apply the restore YAML and we will try to see whether application got restored in different namespace. So this is our new namespace which got just created. and our application in test new space it has come back and also we can see like the dependent service account also got restored in this namespace. So during uh, with the during restore also we can use several options like you want to rename the resources so that you can have a good um, uh, uh, remark I mean good differentiation about which got which resources got restored. So that's all. So if you have any queries, we can take. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot for listening.